Today we're going to study various possible mechanisms of UFO propulsion and we're going to start with this crop picture from Czechoslovakia in July of 2018. There we can see a wire coil at the bottom with a spinning disc above it. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to take a wire coil and put it here which looks like the wire coil it's just wrapped in black and here I have an aluminium disc three millimeter thick and we are going to put it above it it's free to spin. Now with it, we can spin it or we can lift it. This thing is lifting and spinning at the same time. So what I'm going to do here first, I'm going to spin it just using permanent magnets, NS, 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 using a little drive motor. Watch how that works. We get it spinning and that makes the aluminium just spin. That's simply a lens law drag just like for a copper induction motor. This makes any currents in there and they just follow along. The second thing we can do is we can use an AC power supply that I have over here. Here's the voltage controller. And we can put AC power into that wire coil from a 240 volt supply. And that'll make it lift up in the air, just like in the crop picture. Now, the third thing we're going to do is we're going to combine the two things we're going to lift it up in the air and spin at the same time just as a little demonstration to prove it can be done so here we go, we're putting the disc on here we're getting our little motor ready, spinning and we're going to lift it up in the air and put the thing on top of it and make it spin at the same time it lifts here we go lifting up now let's put the tool and make it spin Now it's spinning and still lifting. Now let's turn it back down again. So what we've done here, we've demonstrated just for principle the two aspects of this crop picture. We've had the aluminium disc lift up and we've had it spin. That just gets us started. Of course it's not UFO propulsion, but it's an interesting demonstration just to get started. Now let's see what happens when we put six magnets NS, NS, NS on a little DC drive motor here's a test magnet, attract, repel, attract, repel, attract, repel we spin them really fast using this little 12 volt DC motor and we put this aluminium sheet right over them now what should happen is the NS magnets alternating should induce eddy currents in this disc which by induction like a standard induction motor should just make it spin in the same direction right along. Here we go, turn it on. Look how nicely it spins. Nikola Tesla would be proud of this. This was like his Columbus egg at the St. Louis Fair. Jumped and spun right off. still spinning. That was good fun, wasn't it? Now why did it jump up and raise off the magnets? Let's see in the next experiment. Okay, now here's another good fun experiment. If we take a little drive motor, we range six magnets, N up, S up, N up, S up, N up, S up, 30 millimeter times 5 millimeter neo magnets and we put an aluminum sheet of 3 millimeter, 150 millimeter diameter over it. Of course it will want to spin with the magnets. What I've done is I've put a little cord so it can't spin. And if it can't spin, let's see what it'll do next. It tries to spin. tries to spin and it rises up. Now the effects we're seeing here depend on relative motion between the NS NS magnets and this aluminium disc. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave the magnet stationary 
and we're going to spin this aluminium disc and we'll see what happens over them. You see it's spinning clockwise. And that makes the magnet spin clockwise. Or we can spin anti-clockwise with the aluminum disc, relative motion, and that makes the magnets spin anti-clockwise. Now what I've done is I've started the six magnets spinning weakly anti-clockwise due to this DC motor over here, and I've had the aluminium sheet spin the other way and see if it slows it down. So here we go. And you can see it just stops it completely at the aluminium sheet spinning. Let's move it away. Start spinning again. Bring it back. Stop. Move it away. Start spinning again. So these two spinning objects can exert a force on one another through relative motion. These magnets can be spinning relatively fast, but an aluminium disc over it just by spinning can break. Let's watch this. See it breaks it? Doesn't quite reverse direction. Pull it away. It'll start spinning again. Go over it. Breaks it. Pull it away. Start spinning again. Quite similarly, these magnets can be spinning very slowly, say anti-clockwise. And we put this aluminium disc over them, spin the same direction, It'll speed them up. It'll slow down again. Put it over them. It'll speed them up. Next we're going to see how three different kinds of metal respond to Lenz law interactions regarding spin. We have this drive motor with NS, NS, NS magnets sitting in the center we can just turn it on or off quite easily using a DC 12 volt control and over it we're going to put a sheet of aluminium, a sheet of copper or a sheet of stainless steel so let's put the aluminium sheet first 3 millimeter disc 150 millimeters in diameter we turn it on the aluminium sheet disc spins quite well as the magnets spin. Okay, now let's go to copper. I didn't have 150 millimeter copper of this size, but here's 110, it's pretty close. The copper sheet likewise spins very fast as the magnets spin below it, alternating NS, NS, NS. Now let's take a piece of stainless steel, the same thickness, 3 millimeter and 150 diameter, and see what happens. Now stainless steel conducts current very weakly and also has very low magnetism. Almost nothing happens. It won't spin. So we've got positive results for aluminium, positive results for copper, but no result for stainless steel. Now very briefly we will compare how 240 volts put through a little wire coil will do lens lift interactions with an aluminium disc, a copper disc, or a stainless steel disc all three millimeters thick. Let's put the aluminium disc on top of it first. 150 millimeters, three millimeters thick. you can see that it clearly lifts up. Now let's put the copper disc on it. 110 millimeters in diameter, three millimeters thick. The copper disc also clearly lifts up. Now let's put a stainless steel disc on it. Three millimeters thick, 150 millimeters in diameter. Does nothing. And the reason is because it doesn't conduct electricity that well. It does a bit, and it's also not magnetic, especially. Let's put the aluminium disc one more time just to see how high it gets. The disc has to get magnetic, and that's what stainless steel can't do. 
goes quite high, doesn't it? That's aluminium. So that's the basis of lens lift interactions. An alternating AC current here of 240 volts creates an alternating NS magnetic field and this creates a reverse field around the disc that way and that way in response. This disc can conduct current but it's not really very magnetic, the stainless steel and the copper also works. Let's lift it up one more time just to confirm it. There's copper going up. But not stainless steel. Now it's also very interesting if we have six NSNS magnets and start spinning them and put liquid gallium over them at about 40 degrees, which liquid. They'll also induce a spinning motion in the gallium, just like they would for aluminium. Look at the vortex going all around. Very fast spinning vortex. liquid gallium over six spinning NSNS magnets. And when we turn off the spin, it stops again. Now interestingly, if we take the same sample of gallium, and we put it in the refrigerator for a little while and try to spin it over these magnets then, any spin effects become quite weak. I can get it to spin a little bit. But not nearly as much as for liquid gallium. Also, if we take either solid or liquid gallium and put it on top of a wire coil to see if we get any lens lift effects, they're very weak. For 120 volts, that's about 240 volts. There's almost no lift. That may be because the gallium is heavy or maybe it just doesn't want to lift. So with the solid gallium, our magnetic and electrical effects go way down versus the liquid gallium. And it melts about 30 degrees. That's liquid gallium being induced to spin by the magnets below into a big disc-like shape. Very interesting, isn't it? Liquid gallium swirling as a vortex over these spinning NS, NS magnets. Let's slow it down now. You can see the spin stops. Let's spin it again. So, we know that liquid gallium will behave just like aluminium, but in a liquid state. Thank you very much.